I'm Brittany, this is Aming, and welcome to Gay Watch, where we watch gay things, sometimes we read them, and sometimes we read Volume 6 of Heaven Official's Blessing. We should be finishing this today, and actually it should be a rather light day, we may finish early. We usually read for about 2 hours and 40 to 50 pages, but uh, I think we only have 30 some odd pages left before we finish for today. So we can we can take our time. It's a nice soft landing, the end of this volume. Who knows? We'll find out, I guess. But um, at least we don't have any kind of time constraints. We should be pretty good on time. Um, if anyone who uh, has written down or knows the exact place that we left off, I had the bookmark in here, but I'm kind of doubting it. So I just need to double check the page we left off. I have it that we left off on 315, which is chapter 104. Um, but for some reason, my brain is just telling me that we were a few pages before that. Uh, it was, it was, it was, I, yeah, I have uh, a blue turnip says page 314. Yeah, yeah, okay. I figured I was just crazy. Start of the chapter, yeah. Alrighty. Um, I have seen that we have Janae Henning here today. We have been blessed with Janae's presence. Hi, Janae. She has uh, she has a YouTube channel as well. She watches and reads Asian media, which often includes gay things. I watch gay things, which often includes Asian media. So you can see the Venn diagram of our channels. You should go follow her. She's delightful. She's wonderful. She is a beautiful reactor. You probably already follow her, but go follow her if you don't. Always wonderful to have you here, Janae. Alrighty, since we are at the top of chapter 104, it's been a little bit more of a rough going for Shelian. We have, just because it's really easy to tell, um, without actually seeing what the art is or what's going on. It, it looks like we have another two pieces of art before the end of this just for whatever information that uh, that that's worth that makes me nervous considering the art we've gotten in this volume which we're not going to talk about so we finish the volume today and there is typically about a week break in between live streams that just helps me out with my schedule uh, but after that we will be hopping into volume seven and it'll be uh, this it should be the same as per usual my schedule for october and november is bonkers so just keep an eye out. if you're on the patreon you can keep an eye out for the weekly streaming schedules but before the stream for volume seven starts um i will make a post here on the youtube channel in the community tab as to like what days of the week that they should be happening and all of that jazz before the stream actually starts. So you will be notified. But just, this is a crazy fall I'm having. So I would love to give you a definitive day now, but I, I'm i not entirely sure. But I do know that we have, um, since we're finishing the volume, no other streams for the rest of this week. And then we have the next week off. And then we come back with volume seven. So, shall we finish? I'm deeply nervous. Especially since we're in the middle of talking to no face. And who the fuck enjoys talking to white no fit nobody. So I would much rather he not be here. But since he is, let's go ahead and begin. Um, the 10K Q&A is this week. That is not a stream, however. It will be uh, much easier for me to film that off stream and then just post it as like a regular video. Um, especially since I got a bunch uh, of questions in ahead of time and I don't think there's any planet in which I would have enough time to answer the questions that I got um, from patrons and the people on uh, the YouTube post and then still have time to answer more questions after that. I don't think that world exists. So it will be a regular video and I do film that. I film that tomorrow actually. So if you still have a question that you would like for the Q&A, uh, there is a post on the community tab here asking for questions. Go and comment your question 
by uh, noon tomorrow because I'll be filming around this time tomorrow. And that it stands a very, very, very good chance of being answered. And of course, if you're a patron, there's a post over on the Patreon for you to comment there. And those comments will get uh, will be answered first. Alrighty. Now you get to join a lovely scene. I have I have I do have wine. I have wine left, but not like the nice full glass that I would want. I'm in the last the last gasp of wine over here. So as long as the end of the volume is gentle with me, we should be fine. Let's find out, I guess. Okay. Chapter 104. Man in Abyss receives a bamboo hat in the rain. That already has me emotional. I know no one will come, but it's none of your shitty business, Shelian retorted with force. Then why did you poke a hole to lie down in? White No Face languidly asked. Are you trying to get some attention? No one will cry over you. That's a lie. That's a lie. That's one of many lies, I feel, that No Face has told. I'm doing this because I want to, Sheely encountered. It's none of your shitty business. If someone does come to help you, what will you do? And if no one comes, what will you do? Shi Lian didn't answer his questions, but instead started cursing. Why do you talk so much shit? I'm going to throw up. It's none of your shitty business. None of your shitty business. Even as his words became more vulgar and rude, his tone more frustrated, he still only knew so many curse words. White No Face laughed out loud in amusement. Silly child. He sighed and turned around. Just as well. Either way, there is only one day left. It's fine to let you foolishly struggle for a bit. Regardless, no one will come give you a cup of water or help you pull out the sword. Remember. White No Face reminded him once more of the consequences. <coughs> Tomorrow at sunset, if you still haven't unleashed the plague of human face disease, the curse will fall upon you. Shilian listened quietly and didn't move a muscle. The third day, Shilian was still lying in that deep, human-shaped pit in the middle of the road. His position hadn't even changed. The crowd that day wasn't much different from the crowd the day before. They all detoured around him at a distance and simply went about their day. Although the incident where a strange man fell from the sky had been reported to the authorities, when they heard that it might be a god of misfortune, they didn't want to deal with it. He wasn't really causing any trouble, after all, just lying there, like a dead man. The authorities brushed off the affair with a vague promise to keep an eye on it for a few days. That basically meant they weren't going to bother. Besides, maybe something would change on its own. Several curious children came scurrying over and squatted by the edge of the pit to look at the strange man inside. They picked up a tree branch and began to surreptitiously poke at him, but Shilian was like a dead fish and didn't react. They were still fascinated and wanted to try to throw something at him to see if he'd respond to that, but they were discovered by their parents before they could follow through. The children were lectured harshly, then dragged home and grounded. The water merchant from the day before still kept sneaking glances in his direction. Shilian hadn't had a single drop of water for a day and a night, and a layer of dry, withered, dead skin had formed on his lips. Feeling sorry at the sight, the water merchant ladled out a bowl of water to deliver it, but his wife deliberately elbowed him and made him topple the bowl. He was forced to relent. This water merchant wouldn't happen to go on and become... We'll get there. <coughs> Perhaps the heavens wanted to join in on the fun, for after midday, drizzling rain began to fall. The street vendors hurriedly packed up their stalls, and the pedestrians shouted at each other to hurry home. They all quickly left. The rain poured harder and harder, scouring Shilian's face until he looked even paler, and soaking his entire body until he was utterly drenched. A shadow silently appeared next to Shilian, its owner dressed in white. 
No one on the street seemed to have noticed this particular, this peculiar figure. White No Face looked condescendingly down at him. The sun is about to set. Shilian was silent. You aren't the god of misfortune, but they would rather believe that you are, and they're unwilling to believe you aren't. Once upon a time, you defied the heavens and created rain for young An. Yet now, they won't even give you a cup of water. Stabbing you a hundred times might have been done in desperation, but now they're not even willing to do something as simple as pulling out a sword. They all consider it too much trouble. I've told you this time and again. No one will come help you, White No Faced finished, his voice soft with pity. There was a voice deep down in Shilian screaming hysterically, admit it, what he said is true. There's no one, no one, no one. There isn't a single person who will help me. As if he had heard the desperate cry in Shilian's heart, White No Face seemed to smile a bit. He reached out and gripped the hilt of the black sword. It's all right. They won't help you. But I will. He exerted some force and pulled the black sword from Shilian's stomach, then tossed it down beside Shilian with a resounding clang. Soon after, the shadow of white cloth in the rain laughed lightly and backed away, as if he had achieved all he wanted to do. Leaving Shilian to his own devices, he vanished. Did he wait until the absolute last second, though? Like, we got to the evening, but like... I don't know. He seems like that dude who would be like, well, I know that someone is going to show up in the last five seconds, so I'll pull the sword out in the last ten seconds just to make it look super bleak. You know? Once the black sword was pulled out, Shilian's wound was left exposed to the harsh rain. The once numbed pain had started to spread again, but that was the only thing he could feel in that moment. The sound of wild footsteps stomping through water drifted over, like some passerby was rushing through the rain nearby. But Shilian was no longer secretly hopeful. He slowly sat up, yet the motion was still unexpected. He was interrupted by a loud yell, and a man fell heavily next to him. The man had carried a large basket on his back and wore a bamboo hat to shield him against the rain. It was probably due to the downpour that he hadn't seen that there was someone in a pit on the road. He'd been running fast, and he'd only noticed when he'd gotten closer and Shilian suddenly appeared. He tried to stop short, but had instead fallen quite badly. As he tumbled to the ground next to the human-shaped pit, he began to scream a barrage of curses on the spot. What the fuck? His bamboo hat had flown off, and the basket on his back had toppled and spilled its cargo of white rice everywhere. The man sat back and screamed in frustration, slapping at the ground. The wet mud and rice splattered Shilian. Outraged, the man leapt to his feet in a flurry and pointed a finger squarely in Shilian's face. What the hell? This ancestor worked his ass off to earn a bit of money to buy this rice, and now it's all gone just like that? How many lifetimes worth of awful luck is this? Pay me back! Don't sit there pretending to be dead. Pay me back! Shilian didn't bother to spare him a single look, planning to simply ignore him. However, the man was unrelenting, and he grabbed Shilian by the collar. Are you asking for death? Huh? I'm talking to you! Yes, Shilian replied coldly. The man clicked his tongue. Well, if you want to fucking die, go scamper off somewhere and die quietly on your own. What are you, what are you doing blocking people's way in the middle of the road? Can't even die in peace. What a nuisance. <sighs> Shilian let himself be shaken wildly by his collar, stoic and expressionless and utterly numb. Cuss. Cuss all you want. Nothing matters anymore, so curse me, however you want. Everything will disappear soon. Ay. The sun was about to set. This reminds me. I meant, I, I, I meant to say before we started, um, to those who have already read this and who are n uh, nice enough and I guess invested enough to look ahead and like know what we're covering today, know th uh, what 50 pages we're covering. Um, I will do my best to write it down and remember. But if you guys um, uh, at the top of a stream, um, I will ask you guys to drop just any trigger warnings that might apply. 
um, just in case uh, for people who haven't read whatever it is we're reading doesn't doesn't even matter um if you know of any trigger warnings to go ahead and drop those i'm gonna write that down to start saying that at the top of streams uh, trigger warning not spoiler warning hello not even i had that thought the other day i'm at least happy i remember to mention it now The man gripped the wooden Shi Lian, pressing him for compensation, and when Shi Lian remained unresponsive, he bawled him out. That wasn't enough for the man, but after pushing and shoving him for a long time, he picked up his bamboo hat from the ground, put it on his head, and walked away grumbling. Shi Lian was thrown back into the pit with a dull thud. Gradually, he began to hear a clamor louder than the sound of the rain. It was the shrieking of millions of souls of the dead sealed within the black sword. If I had a fucking nickel for my beloved character coming into contact with a goddamn black sword that had a million souls, probably of resentful energy in it, I'd have two nickels and it would be all her fault. <clears throat> As the sun sank bit by bit in the west, they started hollering and wailing like mad inside Shi Lian's head, cheering and rejoicing for the arrival of freedom and revenge. Shi Lian raised a hand and covered his face. As his other hand shakily reached out to grab the black sword on the ground, he noticed something strange. The rain seemed to have stop, stopped. No. The rain hadn't stopped. Something had been placed over his head to shield him from the downpour. Shilian's eyes snapped open and he looked up. He saw someone crouched in front of him, pressing the bamboo hat that had once been on his own head onto Shilian's. It was the man who had just been bawling him out. Shilian glared at the man, and the man glared back at him. What are you looking at me like that for? What, it was just some cussing? You really want to go die over it? He spat on the ground as he spoke. Looking so miserable, like you're in mourning. It's unlucky, I tell you. Shilian was speechless. The man had been rough and aggressive earlier, but he must have felt a little guilty after thinking about what he'd done. He grumbled a bit more, but then he started to, tr to try and explain himself. All right, all right, I was over the line earlier, but you still deserved that scolding. Who told you to act so nuts? And who's never been cussed at before? Shilian's eyes were round and bulging, and he found himself unable to speak. There's art. This is the art. There's art of Shilian in the rain with the hat and the big bulging sad eyes. This poor goddamn boy. Uh. The man grew impatient. Fine, fine, fine. It's my bad luck today. You don't have to pay me back for the rice, but what are you still lying around here for? You're a grown man, not a child. Are you waiting for your mom and pa to pick you up? Get up, get up, get up, get up. As he urged him, he tugged at Shi Lian and finally pulled him to his feet. Then he heartily slapped Shi Lian twice on the back. Stand up, hurry home now. And just like that, Shilian was pulled from the human-shaped pit. The two slaps almost sent him tumbling to the ground. He was so dumbfounded. By the time he snapped out of it, the man was already gone. Only the bamboo hat on his head remained, reminding him that someone had stopped to pull him out. It hadn't been a hallucination. He didn't know how long he had been standing there when White No-Face reappeared behind him. This time he didn't laugh. His voice wasn't so easy and carefree anymore. He instead sounded vaguely worried and displeased when he asked, What are you doing? The rain was still pouring down, but Shi Lian was wearing a bamboo hat that someone had given him. While his body was drenched, at least his head and face were spared. 
but his cheeks were still wet. When Shi Lian didn't answer, White No Face reminded him in a dark tone, The sun is about to set. Take up your sword. You know what will happen if you don't. Shi Lian didn't turn to look at him as he said softly as he softly said, Fuck you. What did you say? White No Face's voice carried a trace of frost. Now Shi Lian turned to him. You didn't hear me? Then I'll say it again, he said calmly. Suddenly, he struck out with a violent, thunderous kick that sent White No-Face flying dozens of meters away. Shilian stomped his foot to the ground, and with one hand clutching his wound, he pointed at White No-Face. In his most booming voice, he yelled with everything he had. I said, fuck you! Who do you think you are to dare talk to me like that? I am the crown prince. Tears were streaming down his face. One person. Just one. Really. Just one person was enough. While White No-Face was sent flying by his kick, he flipped in the air and landed easily. Are you mad? White No-Face shouted at him in absolute fury. In all these years, this was the very first time Shi Lian had seen the creature react with such emotion. The sight gave him enormous pleasure. He grabbed the black sword from the ground and charged forward. I'm not mad. I've just come back around. We'll let this get... I'll talk about it in a second. The first kick had caught him by surprise, but the next attacks wouldn't be so easy. White No-Face dodged Chi Lian's blows as he flung icy accusations at him. Have you forgotten how your parents left you, how your people treated you, how your worshippers betrayed you? All because of that man, that puny, insignificant person. You've forgotten everything? I haven't forgotten, but Chi Lian swung the sword and bellowed with angry vigor. It's none of your shitty business. White No-Face seized the tip of the sword and gripped it extremely firmly. Blood dripped from his fingers and his knuckles cracked. He was losing it a little. He muttered incredulously, Useless trash. Useless trash. You're absolutely useless trash. You've come so far, but you can still regret. You can actually turn back. Shi Lian pressed harder into his thwarted sword strike and replied through gritted teeth, You disgust me. I refuse to ever become something as disgusting as you. We're going to bask in that for a second. Hang on. Shi Lian pressed harder into his thwarted sword. Oh, <laughs> I got so excited I backtracked. <coughs> that seemed to stun some calm back into White No Face. <coughs> <coughs> and he regained the tone of voice that made it sound like everything was under his control. Never mind. This is simply one final, minuscule struggle in the face of death. Or did you forget what I told you? Shi Lian exhaled harshly as White No-Face slowly and clearly reminded him, You summoned the souls of the battlefield's dead. Now it's too late. They will not be stopped. Amidst the heavy rain, the black sword in Shi Lian's hand emitted a sharp, ringing cry that stabbed painfully at his ears and head. What will you do? White No-Face asked. Is it worth it to take on the curse of the ages? For these people... No. No. Absolutely the fuck not. No, no. Where was I? What did I just read? I did not... Hang on. Hang on. Hold, please. Where the fuck even am I? Is it worth it to take on the curse of the ages? <sighs> For these people, you cannot be serious. No, this, I'm, I'm not, this is not, uh-uh, 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 this is not what I think it is. This, this does not mean what I think it means. 
the, no, absolutely, no, 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 no. Ever since his kick connected, Shilian's blood was boiling in his veins and rushing to his head. All the swords swinging and the words he spat came straight from his heart, with no thought of what he'd do or anything that came next. When he heard White No Face's question, he didn't know how to answer it. You won't see what I plan to do. I'll get rid of you before that. White No Face snorted. How arrogant. Just as he finished speaking, Shilian felt himself leave the ground, and his entire body was sent flying. This is not how he ascends. I don't think him being sent flying was him ascending, but like... This can't be how he ascends. He takes on the curse of an entire battlefield's worth of people, and that's how he fucking ascends. No. No. I'm incorrect. I'm incorrect. <clears throat> I'm just... I'm deeply incorrect. I am not right about this at all. <clears throat> he instantly steadied his mind to find his center, but before he could find his balance, a white figure flashed above him and struck down with force. It was like Shilian had become a ball of iron thrown by a sling, and he crashed deep into the ground with a resounding boom. Shilian had started out with a sliver of hope that if he gave it his all, with a sudden burst of strength, he could come out victorious. But after this strike, he was painfully aware of the reality. He couldn't win. <coughs> Too strong. The creature's strength absolutely overwhelmed him. Shilian had never found an opponent overwhelming like this before. The very idea would flash through his mind on rare occasions, such as the few times he sparred with Jun Wu. But while Jun Wu was incredibly strong, his power was measured and controlled, deliberate and careful, the complete opposite of White No Face. There was a maliciousness in White No Face's strength that bordered on vicious, and his murderous intent brimmed with resentment. It only took one strike for Shilian to understand. He would never be able to win against White No Face. Perhaps only Jun Wu would be a match for the creature. But the voice of, Sh but the voice of Shi Lian, as he was now, would never reach Jun Wu. A violent stomp, and White No Face's snow white boot crushed down on Shi Lian's chest. Your arrogance and naive dreams caused everything right from the start. He snapped chillingly. Shilian could feel his organs twist and retract from the stomp, the pain excruciating, but he held back a mouthful of blood. No, it wasn't me. Huh? White No Face queried in an unpleasant tone. Shilian reached out and firmly clutched the boot on his chest. His eyes were clearer than ever before, shining bright. You brought the plague. You caused everything. White No Face humped. Perhaps. If you must think of it that way. Then he seemed to smile. But it, you, <laughs> mm -hmm. but you need to understand something. If it wasn't for your arrogance and defying the heavens, I never would have appeared in this world. I was born by heaven's will. What the fuck are you saying to me right now? Excuse me? Hang on. If it wasn't for your arrogance in defying the heavens, I never would have appeared in this world. I was born by heaven's will. You know? I've been noticing throughout the series <coughs> that um, we've been really depicting kind of the pros and cons of a setup like this. You know, heaven, ghosts, heavenly officials, and all that jazz, and how it makes sense, and how it doesn't, and how it works, and how it doesn't, and how it's rock solid, and how it's deeply exploitable, and all of that madness. So there's been a little thing in the back of my head for most of the time, um, being about what if that becomes like a big thing later? What if this is one of those stories that winds up toppling the status quo in favor for something better? And if he's telling the truth, and White No Face really was brought upon the world 
from the heavens as punishment on Shelian for insubordination and disobedience. I don't know. We might be headed that way. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I think there's a Hunger Games version of this, of this story where it all comes tumbling down. The flames in Shelian's eyes weren't snuffed out by the heavy rain. In fact, they blazed all the stronger. Enough with the arrogance. I don't need to teach. I don't need you to teach me anything. I can learn on my own. If a thing like you represents heaven's will, then heaven's will should be destroyed. Ah! Oh! I said it. I did it. Ha! Huh! This is why I say things. Also, holy shit! Hang on a sec. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, we have a lot going on. I'm really glad we only have thirty some odd pages today because we need to fucking stop. Holy shit. <clears throat> okay. If a thing like you represents heaven's will, then heaven's will should be destroyed. He's saying this pretty goddamn confidently. I'm just saying. But if that means that he's kind of low-key had this, uh, uh, like, revolution, um, bring it all down angle for, uh, a while now, that would give, that would give, um, the, uh, relevant sections of story a whole new interesting angle but this could also rather than a declaration of and i will be the one to topple it down it could be a declaration of then heaven's will should be destroyed and that is just you know something i know now something i'm aware of now me personally not necessarily that he is now going to set out to bring it down himself you know what i mean but I was a paragraph. I was a paragraph away from that. Motherfucker. Muffled thunder rolled in from the horizon. Whirling winds blew. White No-Face's voice dropped deep and soft. I took the utmost care in teaching you, but you remain obtuse and stubborn. Crown Prince... I've lost my patience. That's another thing. If he was sent from the fucking heavens and he took on, if he was created by the heavens and he's taken on this whole, I'm teaching you a lesson thing. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. This, this is, if this has literally just been the heavens the whole time trying to teach Shelian a fucking lesson. <clears throat> we're just gonna we're just gonna have some more wine yeah okay i'm queer from a religious background so just give me a second grapple with that not even on that page anymore okay Shelian coughed a few times and white no face continued however it makes no difference either way you already roused them and there is only one step left to take allow me to help you with that what are you doing? Shelian cried in alarm. White No Face bent down and seized Shelian's hand, then stuffed the black sword into his palm, forcing him to grip it and raise it to the sky. A blinding bolt of heavenly lightning struck the black blade and infused its heart with power. It gleamed eerie light. Dense, gloomy clouds began to stir, and soon a sea of black had enveloped Young An's skies entirely. A bolt of heavenly lightning is responsible for this. Okay. Okay. Countless faces, arms, and legs roiled within the storm as if hell had moved to the heavens. 
Oh my god, please. Can we go this direction? Can we please go this direction? Oh my god. Can please? Can we please? Can we please? <coughs> I'm too excited. Hang on. Mm. Ah. Ah. Okay. Right then, the last sliver of the sun sank below the horizon. Shilian lay on the ground. His eyes reflected the roiling black clouds in the sky torn by flashing lightning and squalling thunder. White No-Face walked away, and the black sword dropped to the ground with a clang. It was like millions of horses were shrieking and howling in the clouds, an apocalyptic parade. Throughout the streets and alleyways, the, the citizens were confused and alarmed by the cacophony and came outside to see what was happening. What's going on? What's all that noise? What the hell? What's that in the sky? Is that a human face? It's chaos. It's a bad omen. The world is ending. Shilian was covered in mud and grime and he stumbled as he crawled off the ground. Go home. Go back to your houses. Don't come out. Go home. Run, he yelled. Human face disease was about to be unleashed once again. From fucking heaven. From fucking... I have time. We have time. We are okay. Haven't even been reading for 20 minutes. All right. Shilian frantically waved his hands. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. I'm right. I was right. <coughs> Shilian frantically waved his hands while no while White No Face stood to one side and chuckled softly. Shilian whipped his head around and glared at him in fury. White No Face tucked his, tucked his hands into his sleeves and said with easy calm, "Why so angry? You can't turn back now. So why not just enjoy the sweetness of revenge? Your hands wrought this." You should appreciate your handiwork. You really think I can't do anything about this? Shilian said. If you have a plan, then please. Go ahead, White No Face replied. Shilian drew in a deep breath. Then he picked up the black sword on the ground and approached the crowd on the street. Everyone recognized him as the crown prince of the previous dynasty who had been lying in the street for the past two days. A living ghost, an ungodly god, an inhuman human. Hang on, sorry. That was, like, particularly fucking raw. That was, that was pretty metal. I need to write down, what the hell page did that happen on? 327. What the fuck? They all backed away cautiously at his approach. All of you, stop where you are, Shilian barked. Although he was covered in mud and grime from head to toe, there was a strange aura about him. For some reason, everyone actually stopped. Do you see those things in the sky? Shilian asked. The crowd nodded unconsciously. Those are vengeful spirits that will trigger a plague of human face disease, Shilian continued. Very soon it will erupt once again. The black sea of clouds was indeed terrifying, and the people watching didn't need much convincing to believe his words. Horror gripped the crowd. Human face disease? Why has it returned? Could it really be... Some were at a complete loss. Some turned around and hoped to flee, but most of them stood where they were, apprehensively waiting for Shilian to say more. But he had no more to say. He only gripped the sword and raised it to the crowd. The crowd jumped back in fear the moment he raised that chilling weapon, but Shilian barked again, Take this! The people could only gape, mute with fright. What? Someone choked out? Shilian held the sword like that, offering it to them under the pouring rain, as long as you stab me with the sword, you won't be affected by the plague, he said grimly. White No-Face's smile seemed to falter. A moment later, he asked with relative calm, Crown Prince, have you gone mad? The people were bewildered as well. What 
What are you saying? Is he crazy? Take the sword and stab him, really? What is he planning? The crowd babbled and muttered and White No-Face suddenly burst out laughing. Have you lost your mind? Or do you miss the taste of being pierced by a hundred swords? No, I'm afraid this time it will be ten thousand. Open your eyes and look properly at the sky. His voice quickly lost all its mirth and he, as he pointed up. The vengeful spirits have enveloped all of Young An. If you want to save the common people, all of Young An will need to stab you. You will become nothing but a puddle of flesh within a day. This foolishness is no different than from from when you tried to defy the heavens and create rain. Do you really think you can save everyone? I have so much to say that I can't say anything. <sighs> Literally heaven. Detesting someone's desire to save everyone so much. <clears throat> that they okay 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 <sighs> Hang on. There we go. We're on page 329, by the way. Shi Lian kept his back turned to him. If a day isn't enough, let it take a month. If a month won't, if a month won't do, then two months, three months. If I can't save 10,000, then I'll save 1,000. If I can't save 1,000, then I'll save 100 or 10 or even just one. Now is when I'm going to bring it up. Holy fucking shit. Have you ever heard of that fable? Um, or fable or just story or just someone came up with an anecdote? I don't know. But have you heard that um, that old story about, you know, the old man who wanders down the beach every day and there's just thousands of, God, I forget what they are, um, clams or crabs or what have you. It doesn't really matter. But the beach is littered with them. And they should really be back in the ocean, right? And this old man walks down the beach every day. And, you know, he just, he, he'll he pick one up as he's walking. He'll pick one up and throw it back in the ocean. Pick one up and throw it back in the ocean. And somebody asks him, like, why do you do this? You can't possibly throw them all back in the ocean. There's way too many. And the old man says, because uh, it's like, why, what does it matter, right? What does it matter? And the old man says, it mattered to that one. That idea, that concept right? Really, really thriving in these last few pages in a variety of ways. <clears throat> Why? White No Face demanded in outrage. Shilian raised the sword with both hands and roared to the skies. I don't have a reason. Just because I want to. Even if I explained it to you, he cocked his head to glance at him. Useless trash like you wouldn't understand. His condescension and disdain were too obvious and cut too deeply. White No-Face couldn't retain the calm in his voice as he said, You. What did you call me? 
Shi Lian pointedly ignored him and turned calmly to the crowd. Just one stab and everything will be all right. I won't die. You've all seen that for yourselves over the past two days. However, everyone is only allowed one turn, with no messing about, and you all must listen to my instructions. If anyone tries to start anything, I'll smash your head. Trust me, I can smash a hundred of you with one hand. White No-Face was incredulous. The useless trash who brought ruin to his kingdom dares to call me useless trash. No one dared take the sword in Shi Lian's hand, but no one dared to flee either. As he was ignored, White No Face sank deeper and deeper into anger. Very well, he said coolly. Then I will sit back and watch you be ruined by your obstinance. However, no matter how this ends, you've brought it upon yourself. I hope you don't fall apart and come crying to me in regret. As the people shuffled around and waffled in confusion, the black clouds in the sky grew denser by the minute and pressed down heavier. They seemed ready to collapse. The shrieking cries of countless human faces were so loud it was like they were right beside their ears. Finally, one father was so scared he couldn't take it anymore. He dragged his child over and took the sword. Uh, I'll give it a try with my shabao, I guess. The others in the crowd were still hesitating, and they exclaimed in surprise, You're actually going to do it? The father seemed just as hesitant. Once again, it's apparent. But he braced himself and stammered, But, but I really don't think he'll die. I, uh, I'm sorry, buddy. I'm really sorry. My shabao. He raised a hand to cover the eyes of the small child in his arms and forced him to grip the black sword. White no face didn't interfere, just chuckled mockingly. Shilian clenched his fists and waited for the pain to seize him. In his head, he told himself, It's all right. I've already been hurt so many times. I'll get used to this soon enough. But just as the black sword was about to pierce his gut, someone unexpectedly knocked it aside. The pain Shilian was expecting never came. Instead, he heard a loud, clear, You can't! Shilian whipped his head around to look. The one who had knocked the black sword off course, was the water merchant. The water merchant had been in the crowd, but he stepped forward after his tolerance was exhausted. Well, this is an ugly sight. Can't you see that huge bloody spot on his stomach? Are you really sure this won't kill him? And even if he doesn't die, he'll clearly still bleed. The father scrunched up his face miserably. But, but... The water merchant's wife subtly elbowed him again, but the water merchant turned and admonished her with a hushed, Stop poking me. If you have a problem, we'll talk later. Then he turned back around. Besides, for all we know, we could contract the disease from stabbing him, so let's not just stab blindly, huh? The father pointed to the sky, but soon, just then, the small child in his arms started crying, and the water merchant pointed at him. Look, look, your son is scared to tears because you're forcing him to stab someone. Sure enough, the small child started crying even louder and threw the black sword to the ground. He probably didn't understand what his father was thinking, but he was scared nonetheless. This killed the father's plan completely, and he retreated into the crowd holding his son. There were some among the crowd who had been ready to try, but they didn't feel as brave anymore when they saw how the first person who stepped up had been sent packing. They could only yell anonymously from the safety of the crowd, didn't you hear what he said? A plague of human face disease is about to descend upon us. He's a god of misfortune. He brought this on our heads. However, the water merchant countered. Wait, hang on. I just picked up on the irony of him being a water merchant. Where even? I just knocked myself off course. Even if he's the god of misfortune, you don't think he'd willingly ask to be stabbed, do you? His arguing had started to piss some people off. He said that he's willing, so what's the problem? Do you want us all to die together? Just focus on selling your water. You shortchange people all the time, so what are you doing sticking your neck out now? And once again, it's a uh, gray character. Like, um... Like the street performer last time. He was an asshole. He was kind of a dick. But he still stood up for... Okay. 
MXTX being being awful loud these last few pages, and honestly, I'm fucking alive. <clears throat> the water merchant's wife had kept elbowing him through all this, but when she heard that accusation, her face went red and she exploded. Fucking bullshit! Who shortchanged you? Come the hell out here and say that to my face! The accuser instantly shrank back. The water merchant also flushed, but soon after he hardened up again. I say, whether he's willing is his business, but whether we act on it is our business. Oh my god. 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 If they keep this up, this might become my new favorite ending to a volume. Remember how my last favorite ending was... Oh shit, what was it? Volume 2 or 3 or something? Um... When uh, Shelian's uh, mentor said a bunch of amazing stuff and it was just like incredible and I loved it so much. That's been my favorite, my favorite little ending moment so far, even though obviously they're all fantastic. That's been my favorite so far. They fucking keep this shit up. It might have to take back seat. Hang on. We're talking about picking up a blade and stabbing someone. If I had given him water or something over the past few days, maybe I'd be more willing to try this. But I didn't. And who among us did? If I injured him now, I'd feel ashamed. Everyone fell silent at this. Because he'd really, he really had hit the nail on the head. Over the past two days, not a single person had tried to help Shi Lian. The water merchant had at least wanted to help, but he still hadn't managed it. The rest of them hadn't even dared to spare a glance Shi Lian's way. Then what should we do? If we can't do this, why don't you come up with a better plan? Someone grumbled. The crowd was about to get rowdy again, and some even tried to push themselves to the front. Just then, another bellow echoed out. Who's making all this racket? If anyone wants to get through, this ancestor's got a knife. It was the chubby chef who had wanted to pull out the sword just after Shi Lian fell from the sky. He'd been provoked into action and he roared at the crowd. That fellow's right. Yesterday, a bunch of people were so adamant about stopping me from going up to him. If not for them, I would have pulled out that sword. So why are the ones who stopped me the same ones making the most noise now? Pathetic. You think you're special? Well, you certainly don't see such shamelessly thick skins every day. Holy shit! The chef was a large man with a booming voice at the height of his anger. It seemed he had just emerged from his kitchen, so he still had a butcher knife in one hand. Instantly, the ones who had been complaining the loudest didn't dare make another sound. Some members of the crowd had been absent from the area for the past few days, and when they asked what had happened, they were all surprised. No way! None of you tried to help him? Yeah, you all just left him lying there for two days? You didn't even help him sit up or anything? The more questions they asked, the more shame the others felt. Don't act like you would have gone over to help. It's easy to say those pretty things after the fact, they countered. Don't forget, none of us will escape when those hellish things descend. Huh, I assure you, if I were there, I definitely would have pulled out the sword. It's easy to run your mouth after the whole thing is over, which is a point. That is a valid point. Wait, what are you all arguing about? Pulling out a sword isn't the problem right now. The argument was wild and unruly on both sides. It was a brawl waiting to happen. The rain slowly receded and stopped. However, the black clouds were only growing thicker. Their pressure was so intense, it was suffocating the hundreds of people below. Suddenly, startled screams exploded from within the crowd, and fingers pointed to the sky. It's coming! Shilian's head shot up. The human faces churning within the black clouds began to riot, and they plunged to earth like black shooting stars, dragging long tails behind them. The plague of human face disease was descending. The crowd was terrified and lost all sense. Some bolted, some retreated inside, inside houses to hide. And there were also a few who went to grab for the black sword that had been knocked to the ground earlier, but they came up empty, as at some point, it had gone missing. 
Shi Lian had been too shocked by the people's reactions to notice this until now. Where's the sword? Who took it? No one had the time to answer, for they were fleeing in all directions. But how could they possibly be faster than the falling vengeful spirits? The wails and screams of the living and the howls of the vengeful dead erupted from all directions. I swear to God, MXTX single-handedly proves the vitality and importance of context. And exactly what I mean by so many things, most things, life in general, is a full of very specific case by case instances. So trying to apply blanket statements most of the time doesn't get you very far or could learn or could uh, um, do more harm than good, right? Where the fuck am I? Uh, once the vengeful spirits, yes, once the vengeful spirits had caught up to the living, they became like roiling thick black smoke, unrelenting and clingy as they burrowed into every pore and slowly melded into people's bodies. Shilian fart fought arduously to drive them out, but alas, there were too many and he couldn't manage it alone. He helplessly watched countless people wail and howl as the ghosts chased them down. The water merchant and his wife, the chubby chef, they all rolled on the ground, wrestling with the tangled black smoke. The whole while, White No-Face stood close by, watching everything and jeering. That's another thing. Speaking of Hunger Games, we can talk about this context um, all we want in terms of danger is approaching, there is an option to be safe, but what right do we have if we had just done something, blah, 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 and all that stuff. All very valid arguments to have, mind you, in those specific situations. But just as White No Face is standing close by watching everything and jeering, you always have to remember who the real enemy is. Holy shit. I'm so excited. I'm okay. I'm really not. Gripped by anxiety and fury, Shi Lian steeled his mind and roared at the spot that was densest with vengeful spirits. Hey! He caught the creature's attentions easily. He was the mastermind behind their awakening, after all. Shi Lian opened his arms wide. Come to me! The vengeful spirits that had already tangled up living victims hesitated, undecided on whether they should go. But the vengeful spirits still in the air instantly changed course and hurtled straight for Shi Lian. Success! Shi Lian's heart was beating so fast it was going to seize and stop. He didn't know what would happen, or what would become of him. But fueled by the hot blood rushing to his head, he was going to give this everything he had. Even if he could only hope to prove his point, while that vile monster watched him be beaten black and blue, he would still never back down. Even if another hundred thousand souls of the dead were to come, he would still be invincible. You want me to feel sorry for myself and self-destruct? Well, I won't. I will never. I'm just writing that down. Don't mind me. <clears throat> 335 at the top. Wave upon wave of the black tide that drowned the heavens and earth surrounded Shi Lian, and a vengeful spirit wailed as it passed through his body. It felt like Shi Lian's heart had frozen in an instant, and he shuddered. Soon after, a second one came, then a third. The creatures sliced through him like sharp blades as they penetrated his body. Like sharp blades as they penetrated his body. You know, she's not always subtle. Even though we know how subtle she can be. <laughs> she's not always subtle. But it doesn't matter, because even when she's not subtle, it's still, in a way, that fucking works. 
Each time, they took away a sliver of whatever warmth Shi Lian still had left. His face grew paler and paler. Nevertheless, he remained firm and did not back down. <coughs> he had only been touched by a few hundred, and he had only stood his ground for a short time. There would be many more to come. They were the black clouds that blanketed the sky. Shilian closed his eyes, gathering his strength to endure the flaming fury of all the vengeful spirits. Yet unexpectedly, the next attack never came. Confused, he opened his eyes, and to his surprise, the black tide surrounding him had vanished. It had transformed into a roiling black current, which was now flowing away from him. Stunned, Shilian turned to look. At the end of the long street, there stood a black-clad warrior who gripped a long... Black sword. Wu Ming. <sighs> Shi Lian had ordered him to leave the area while he activated the plague of human face disease. Why was he here now? See, and he's just more evidence. Hua Chong is more evidence about the whole it matters to that one thing we have art by the way we have the last bit of art Shi Lian had no idea what Wu Ming was doing here but he was only stunned for a moment before he charged toward him wait what are you doing don't touch that give me back that sword give me back the sword Wu Ming seemed to have heard his voice and looked up Shi Lian couldn't see his real face he only saw that mask with its drawn-on smile. But Shi Lian had a strange feeling that beneath his mask, Wu Ming was really smiling. The feeling was fleeting, however. The vast black torrent and the screaming tide gathered to form a tempest, and it swallowed Wu Ming whole in an instant. And in that instant, Shi Lian heard a heart-wrenching, blood-curdling scream. He thought he had heard that voice somewhere before. No, he knew he had heard that voice somewhere before. Pain. It hurt like he was feeling the same agony. It hurt like a fate worse than death. It hurt so much that his mind and body were being torn apart. It hurt so much that he thudded to his knees, hugging his head as he screamed along, too. The explosion of excruciating pain in his heart came suddenly and left equally fast, and after some unknown time had passed, silence slowly descended upon the area. Shi Lian gradually dropped the hands that hugged his head. Dazed, he looked up and scanned around him. The ground was covered with people, most of them unconscious, but all the vengeful spirits entangling them had vanished. The scene confused him. What happened to the plague of human face disease? What happened to the vengeful spirits? What happened to him? Art. Well, shit. What the fuck? Ah! There was no trace of the black torrent. The only thing that remained were the black clad nameless ghost had once stood up. Uh, the only thing that remained where the black clad nameless ghost had once stood was the black sword, which had fallen to the ground. Beside the point of the fallen blade, there was a tiny white flower. Shi Lian staggered to his feet and walked over, picking up the flower and the sword. He felt his face, looked at his arms. Nothing on his body seemed different. There was nothing to indicate he'd taken on some powerful curse. As he stood there, mystified, he heard a voice behind him. It said softly, Ah. Shi Lian turned around. White No Face was standing behind him, his arms crossed and tucked into his expansive sleeves, which fluttered in the wind. Shi Lian hadn't yet processed what had happened, but he felt a vague sense of foreboding. White No Face glanced at him and started chuckling. The sense of foreboding was growing stronger, and Shi Lian knitted his brows. What are you laughing about? Instead of answering, White No Face asked him, You still don't understand what happened? What? Shi Lian asked. Do you know who that ghost was? White No Face asked. Uh, 
a soul of someone who died on the battlefield? Shulian tried. Yes, White No Face replied. But he was also your very last believer in the world. And now he's no more. Believer? He still had a believer in this world? It was a long moment before Shulian could squeeze out a few choked words. What do you mean, no more? His soul has been dispersed, White No Face replied languidly. Shilian had a hard time accepting this. How did his soul just disperse? Because he was cursed on your behalf. The souls you summoned devoured him whole, leaving not a crumb behind, White No Face said. Shilian couldn't manage a reply. The souls he summoned? Cursed on his behalf. Oh yes, that's right. This wasn't the first time you've met him, White No Face continued. Shilian stared at him blankly. White No Face seemed amused. That ghost had been following you for a while. At first I thought he was simply deeply resentful, so I caught and interrogated him. His answers were quite interesting. The Zhang Yuan Festival, a night of lanterns, a wandering ghost fire. Do you remember the Zhang Yuan Festival? Night of lanterns, the wandering ghost fire, Shilian mumbled. In life, he was a soldier under your command, White No Face lazily hinted. In death, his soul followed you. He died in battle for you, turned into a wrath ghost because you were pierced by a hundred swords. And now, his soul has been obliterated because you unleashed the plague of human face disease. Shi Lian seemed to vaguely recall something, but he hadn't even seen his believer's face. He didn't even know his name. What could he recall? How much could he really recall? Perhaps your highness has believers here who still offer worship. Yes, there was a believer. And he had been the one and only. White No Face was still speaking, going on and on about many things, but Shi Lian was lost in a daze and took none of it in. Finally, White No Face concluded, A god like you is both sad and laughable. And he's even more sad and laughable to have believed in you. When White No Face had mocked him earlier, Shi Lian hadn't reacted. But when he heard this creature insult his believer so condescendingly, it was like Shilian was jolted awake by the stab of a sword. An uncontrollable rage roiled up from within him, and he charged at White No Face. The creature easily seized him. You can't win against me like this. How many times must I tell you before you see the truth? White No Face said coldly. Shilian hadn't wanted to win against him in the first place, and it didn't matter if he couldn't. He simply wanted to beat the creature to a pulp. What do you know? How dare you mock him? He cried angrily. That was his last believer in the world. Of course I dare to mock the follower of a failure, White No Face replied. You're a fool, and your believer is even more of a fool. Listen, if you wish to defeat me, then you must obey my teachings. Otherwise, you can never dream of winning against me. There's like an essay there, <laughs> considering uh, where this bitch came from. Shilian wanted to spit at him with everything he had, but even breathing was difficult. White No Face opened his hand with a flourish, and another cry smiling mask appeared in his palm. Now, let us start over. As he was about to press the mask onto Shilian's face, there came a sudden loud rumbling. Lightning flashed and thunder roared on the horizon, and a mysterious light shot from within the clouds. White No Face stopped in alarm. What is this, a heavenly tribulation? After a pause, he dismissed that statement. No, that's not it. That wasn't it. It was a heavenly tribulation, but that wasn't all. A man's deep voice resounded across the sky. If he cannot win against you, what about me? Shilian's head shot up. A martial god had appeared at the end of the long street. He was clad in white armor and brimmed with a propitious aura. 
A thin sheen of white spiritual light enveloped his body, and he walked toward them step by step with a sword in hand, carving out a path of light in this gloomy, dark world. Shilian's eyes grew wide. Jun Wu! This is why I say things, because they brought up, he brought up so specifically about how Jun Wu might have a chance against White No-Face several pages ago. And I was like, that sent a little red flag up, but I wasn't expecting if Jun Wu and White No-Face were going to have some kind of face-off, I was not expecting it to happen right now. I was like, well, that's going to happen in like volume eight. So, um... Uh, but like, no, really, I had the thought, and this is why I try to say things. <sighs> that was a scene break, by the way. We're in the middle of 341. How are we feeling, fam? I am like pumped and anxious and about to cry all at the same fucking time. How are we feeling? Uh... Oh my god, that's right. They have mentioned that Junior was the one who killed White No Face. The, uh, hmm. When, though, doesn't necessarily have to be now. Oh, I hate having thoughts like that. Whew. Daddy can beat up your toxic ex. Amazing. After the rain had ceased and the skies had cleared, Shi Lian sat on the burnt path, on the burnt earth. Pain <laughs> See, I'm too amped up. Ugh. Hang on. Hang on, hang on. All right. Ugh. Whew. After the rain had ceased and the skies had cleared, Shi Lian sat on the burnt earth, panting lightly. Jun Wu sheathed his sword and walked over. Shen Lei, welcome back to the ranks. He wore a tired expression, traces of blood still on his face from the wounds inflicted by White No Face. Jun Wu was covered in injuries large and small. They were serious, but White No Face's wounds were far more so. His body had been ripped apart and his form has, had been dispersed, leaving behind only a shattered cry smiling mask when he heard him say back to the ranks she Lian blinked he touched his neck and only then did he notice that the cursed shackle was gone jun Wu smiled as expected i was not mistaken it took you even less time to return than i anticipated Shi Lian slowly regained himself. He flashed a small smile in return, but his was a bitter one. After catching his breath, he spoke up. My lord, I want to beg something of you. Permitted, Jun Wu said. Are you not going to ask what it is first? Shi Lian asked. Since you would be asking for a gift upon return to the heavenly court regardless, let today's incident serve as my gift to you for returning to the ranks. The corners of Xilian's lips tugged and he rose to his feet. He looked Jun Wu squarely in the eyes and said with the utmost respect, Pray my lord banish me to the mortal realm once more. Hearing this, Jun Wu's smile faded. Why ever for? I've done wrong, Xilian explained the honest truth. I was the one who unleashed the second plague of human face disease, even though the consequences weren't as severe as the first. This time, the only casualty was a nameless ghost, and perhaps no one in the world had cared for him. <coughs> in the end, the consequences of this second plague weren't nearly as severe. If you knew what was wrong, then you are already in the right, Jun Wu said slowly. However, Shi Lian shook his head. Just knowing is not enough. If I make a mistake, I should be the one punished. But I committed the wrong, and the one who took the punishment for me was... He trailed off and raised his head once more. So as punishment, I pray my lord will grant me a cursed shackle... No, two cursed shackles. One to seal away my spiritual powers. A 
I'm gonna let them finish. I'm gonna I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna let them finish. One to seal away my spiritual powers. Another to disperse all my luck and fortune. Jun Wu frowned slightly. Disperse all your luck and fortune. Will that not make you unlucky beyond belief? Truly make you a god of a god, a god, a god of misfortune? Shi Lian had resented being called a god of misfortune. He was repulsed by the very idea and considered it a great humiliation. However, he no longer cared about things like that. If I am to become a god of misfortune, then so be it. As long as I know deep down that I'm not. Oh, shit. Once his fortune was dispersed, it would naturally flow. This is where I leave you. This is where I'm done. This is where I can't take it anymore. Uh-uh. No. No, no, <laughs> no, 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 this is where I rip her face off. Where is she? Where, where is she? Where is she? Somebody drop her location. I realize nobody knows where she is, but where the fuck is this woman? I want words. I need to speak to her. I demand to speak to the manager. I need to talk to her because this is unacceptable. This is un fucking ex ex no absolutely Once his fortune was dispersed it would naturally flow to the less fortunate It would be a form of atonement What the fuck are you talking about I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I just don't know. I just don't fucking know anymore. I don't. Why do we let this woman type words? Why do we let, we just let her. She just does this and we just let her get away with it. We just let her do these things. Why do, oh my God. I am fucking lightheaded. Oh my god! Okay. Fuck this. Alright. It will be very embarrassing, Jun Wu reminded him. It doesn't matter, Shi Lian said, and to be honest, it feels like I'm almost used to it by now. It wasn't something he'd wanted to get used to, but once he did, it really felt like nothing could harm him. Yeah, when you stop fucking caring what what other people think, when you genuinely stop caring about what other people think, not even just in general, even if it's just about one thing, you stop caring what other people think, and you're fucking free. Holy shit. Jun Wu watched him. Shen Lei, you have to understand that you will no longer be a god if you have no spiritual power. Shi Lian sighed. My lord, I know that better than anyone. After a pause, he said in a tone that was a little frustrated and a little forlorn, People say I'm a god, and so I have spiritual powers. But in truth, I'm not the god they thought I was, and I might not be as invincible as they hoped. Would a real god be such a failure? 
I wanted to protect my people, but I let their corpses spread across the land. I wished to avenge them, but at the very last minute I abandoned the plot. White No Face wasn't wrong about me being a failure. If I'm no longer a god, then so be it. Jun Wu gazed at him intently, and after a long while he said, Shen Lei has grown up. My baby all grown up. Saving China. <sighs> and that should have been something Shi Lian heard from his elders. Unfortunately, his father and mother had no more chances to say it. Ow! The fuck you had to bring that up for? We were having a perfectly good time. A moment later, Jun Wu continued. Since this is the path you have chosen, I will do as you ask. However, I will need a reason to banish you to the mortal realm. He couldn't just casually banish a heavenly official like this was a child's game. Otherwise, how would the world see the heavens? Heaven forbid. But Shi Lian had an idea. My lord, I don't believe we've ever sparred with everything we've got. Jun Wu instantly understood what he meant and smiled. Shen Lei, I am injured. Me too, Shi Lian said. So we're even. Jun Wu nodded. If that is the case, then I will not hold back. Shi Lian smiled, his eyes brightening with excitement at the prospect. I won't either. Scene break. F I can't hit anything anymore. That's the problem. I need to put just like a little nightstand or something. Like right, I'm left-handed. So like right to my left. So that I can bash the hell out of it whenever moments like this happen. <sighs> We're on page 344. His Highness the Crown Prince was banished again. After his smashing and grandiose second heavenly tribulation, the crown prince of Shanley rampaged across the heavens with fierce belligerence. Before even one incense time had passed, he was knocked down below once more by the heavenly emperor. None of the heavenly officials could figure out what that man was thinking, but Shi Lian couldn't figure out what the other heavenly officials were thinking either. Were they really that curious what he was up to? Watching him day after day, disguising themselves as mortals to watch him, disguising themselves as animals to watch him. They had been stalking him for days. Was a grown man laying bricks really that interesting? As he wondered about this, the foreman behind him began to shout, Newbie! Yes! You! Yes, you! I'm talking to you! Get back to work! Stop being lazy! Shi Lian hastily sat up with a loud, Oh! And then... He picked up a ragged cattail fan and started fanning the flames in front of him. He was seated in front of a small stove stacked on several bricks, and upon the stove was a large pot of rice that bubbled as it cooked. This was a construction site where he was paid to haul earth and mud. However, the bricks had already been transported, so Shi Lian's task for, th for the moment was cooking. He cooked and cooked, and as he worked, two carriages approached, hauling two very large divine statues for the two newly built temples nearby. Shi Lian absentmindedly tossed whatever was at hand into the pot, stealing glances at the statues as he did. The two divine statues were carried into their respective temples. Oh my god, if it's Feng Shin and Mu Ching, I'm... <sighs> okay. The two divine statues were carried into their respective temples. From within the hall of the temple on the left, he heard cheers. General Chuan Zhen is great! General Chuan Zhen is generous and kind! Shi Lian was speechless, using generous and kind to praise Mu Ching. Were those devotees serious? <laughs> I can't even Kermit flail the way I need to. I have equipment in front of me. God damn it. I could only finish off the wine at this point. I still have something to drink. That does it for a Ming, but I actually have Shi Lian here. He's full of tea. He's ready to go. Ugh, I have no idea how tea is going to taste after wine, but we'll find out here in a couple of minutes. Ah! Bitch! Okay. Shi Lian, uh, just, uh, 
but they apparently had their reasons. After all, everyone knew that Mu Ching had ascended because he had cleared away the vengeful spirits that stubbornly tarried about the old capital of Shan Lei. Calling that generous and kind wasn't unreasonable. In any case, everyone in the old capital of Shan Lei was very grateful for him. From within the hall of the temple to the right, he heard roars from another set of devotees who refused to be beaten by those of the left temple. She's so fucking relentlessly dedicated to characterization that I could hurl. General Ju Young is great. General Ju Young is brave and mighty. Shi Lian nodded. To this, he had no objections, although that praise might not hold true in the face of women. The devotees on both sides were screaming with all their might, doing all they could to be louder than each other until Shi Lian's ears ached. He sighed and rubbed his forehead as he thought, why must they be like this? If they hated each other so much, wouldn't their problems be solved by not building temples right next to each other? Okay. All right. Okay. So, here's the thing. I've been keeping an eye on those two for a while now. And not gonna lie, it might be that sentence that does it for me. <laughs> if they hated each other so much, wouldn't their problems be solved by not building temples right next to each other that might do it that might be it that might that might tip me over uh-huh that might fucking do it the answer to that was of course not this area was a bustling domain with excellent feng shui and the devotees of those two heavenly officials would never abandon such tempting land solely for the sake of avoiding each other they had to do all they could to steal each other's worshipers and disgust one another Hmm. It didn't take long before the devotees from both sides progressed from yelling to fighting. Over by the stove, Shi Lian determined that the time was about right, so he started banging the pot cover with the spatula and calling out loudly, Everyone, stop fighting, come eat! It was the height of the brawl, so who would bother listening to him? Shi Lian shook his head and opened the pot cover, and the fragrance wafted ten miles around. Now he'd done it. The brawl instantly stopped, and everyone started howling. What the fuck? What's that smell? Who's cooking shit? Not just shit. That shit that smells like pot bottoms? What? This is a hidden treasured royal recipe, Shi Lian began to argue back. Uh, there was a footnote about pot bottoms. That um, Pot bottom is the layer of rice at the very bottom of a cooking pot that is usually burnt. I'm very familiar with the concept. The foreman approached with his hand covering his nose, his face green, and he exclaimed as he jumped in anger, Bullshit! What hidden treasured recipe? Who's royalty? You? Get the hell out of here! That's disgusting! All right, fine. I'll go, Shi Lian agreed. But will you please give me my pay first? You dare to even mention pay? The foreman exclaimed angrily. Why don't you tell me this? Ever since you came, how much have I lost in damages, huh? When it rains, lightning strikes... Aimed right for you. Houses have caught on fire three times and collapsed three times too. You're like a god of misfortune. And you dare ask me for pay? Get out of here. Come back again and I'll beat you up. Hey, that doesn't work, Shilian said. You just said all those things were coming especially for me, so that means nothing happens to anyone else. <sighs> I think you just want to get out of paying your bill. Before he could finish, the foreman and all the other laborers couldn't take the smell wafting out of the pot anymore. They all fled the area, leaving Shi Lian in the dust. Wait! Shi Lian called out. He glanced around and saw that all the brawlers had also been chased away by the stench. Shi Lian was speechless. If you weren't going to eat it, why make me cook such a large pot? Don't waste it just because you've got money, he mumbled to himself. Shaking his head, Shi Lian contemplated for a moment, then ladled out two large bowls of rice. He offered one at the temple of Ju Yang and one at the temple of Xuan Zhen. Feeling that he'd made the best use of everything, he clapped his hands together, completely satisfied. He went back outside to pack up his stuff. He rolled up the straw mat on the ground very seriously and tied it to his sword before stra strapping both to his back. Oh, we have one more piece of art, my bad. The white silk band wrapped around his wrist. Nuzzled him furtively, and Shi Lian patted it before riding the bamboo hat on his head.
Fine, don't pay. I'll go busking. He still had his specialty trick after all, shattering boulders on his chest. As he walked, Shilian suddenly noticed, Shut up! Shut up! I've had it! I've had it! I'm on the last page! Cut me some slack! As he walked, Shilian suddenly noticed a tiny red flower on the side of the road, which looked absolutely precious. He crouched to gently touch its petals, feeling quite cheerful. I hope we shall meet again, he said to it. Even after he had disappeared into the distance, the tiny red flower still danced in the wind. Yeah, that's my favorite ending to a volume so far. Yeah. 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 What do you want from me? I, I, <laughs> what do you want? I, I don't know what... I don't know what you want from me. I mean, what choice do I fucking have? I really don't have one. <sighs> All right. So, man, I can't believe... This just shows how much flailing I was doing this session. We're only short by 15 minutes. We're basically on time for finishing for the day. And it was only the last 32, 34 pages. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Ooh. See what I think. Here's the current, I guess, structure theory, I guess. That, among other things, obviously. But up until now, we've been revealing everything that Shelian is. And we have now ultimately answered the question of why Shilian is the way he is. From a big level to a small little detailed level, we now know the deal. We now know why, right? But we still have two volumes left. So what I'm thinking is now that we know that there's almost like two phases learning who Shilian is and then now that we know everything we can now fully understand what the fuck is about to happen next with this big climax that we are now wandering into which makes all the sense in the world especially in hindsight and also i feel like we've we've answered if I'm remembering correctly, outside of like just an aside line or two, we have now learned everything that went behind making Shilian Shilian. We have filled in a lot of blanks about Hua Chung, but we now need to fully fill in specifically, I think, how he became a uh, ghost king 
how he's going from essentially a flower on the wind, seemingly dispersed forever, to a ghost gang. We haven't gotten the full download on that. So, that's what I imagined will be wrapped up in everything that's going to happen in the finale. And is this a story about either toppling or vastly rearranging the heaven and ghost structure? Um, and all of that, we're also going to get the full download on Hua Chong. And the fact that they have saved that for the end, concerning, deeply worrying. Given the volume we just read, finding out exactly how Hua Chung will not ascend, descended, I will we'll say, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I want to know. I don't know. All I know is that I'm willing to bet that there is a shit ton packed into these, into these last two volumes. There is going to be a lot. And I am a sucker for a good... Um, I'm a sucker for an Act 3. Right? I really love the hype of applying everything that we have learned as an audience to the big last conflict, the big uh, climax, and the big resolution. And we're just... Everything we've learned leads up to this point and it all pays off, right? It's the big payoff. Who doesn't love the big payoff? I fucking love a big payoff. But the thing is, is that this thing is hundreds of thousands of words long. So the payoff is going to be extremely protracted. Hell, I would really even count, you know, the last 30 pages of volume six to be part of the payoff. Because now we finally have a full answer as to one of the two main characters right so the fact that set volume seven and eight are all going to be one nice big long payoff most likely ultimately has me very excited and very terrified at the same time hmm. i'm also deeply conflicted because i want to just dive into volume seven but i know me and i know that at the same time, I could really use a breather, a bit of a breathing room between volume six and volume seven, which is kind of unlike me. Well, not really. I guess in the past, I would probably have needed breathing room between one volume and another, but I never took it <laughs> because I'm obsessive and I hyperfocus and I'm very ADD. So. In the past, I would have just plowed right fucking through. But, because I know this about myself, I am I know that it is ultimately best just take a little bit of a breather. Inhale, exhale, and then we can give the proper energy and attention and love to the next volume. Whew. I imagine this is a blast if you have already read this, yes. Um, Albain, I imagine this is so much fun watching other people go through this. Holy fuck. Um, Jesus, what else? The Dongwa starts this week. The Dongwa starts on Wednesday, um, because I've never reacted to a anime or Donghua as it currently airs. I don't really know how that's going to work for me. So I do not have um, a reaction to episode one of the Dong was scheduled for this week because I need to figure out where I'm going to get the file, how I'm going to get like a good file that's high resolution enough, how I'm going to get subtitles, when exactly that happens and all that stuff. Um... So this first episode, I'm pretty much just going to kind of, I think, react to it whenever I can. Or I might react to it, like, next Monday or something. Um, ahead of episode two on that Wednesday. But, so it's not going to be done this week. But it is happening. I am reacting to it as it airs. And it is airing. Is it airing one episode at a time? 
Somebody confirm this because my my Google abilities suck and I keep trying to find if it's going to land piecemeal or all at once or one at a time. Is it one episode per week? Season one was like that? Yeah? I think it's one episode per week. I'm going off of um, what, I, what I've gathered from anime, but I don't know if... Uh, obviously a Dong Ho release schedule could be different. Oh, okay. Two episodes. Yeah, see, we'll know more on release day. So, like, rather than try to say, I'll do it th then, at this time, and then for whatever reason not have it at the time, that would kind of suck. So, this week is a learning week in terms of what's going on with the Dong Ho. But I am reacting to that 1,010%. Absolutely. That'll be a new experience because now I know things. When I watched season one, it was my first experience of having an official's blessing. I didn't know a goddamn thing. Now I know things, but not everything. And that's going to drive me bonkers. I'm going to lose my mind. It's going to be fabulous. It is 12 episodes. Yeah. So we'll be doing this for a while. Oh, my God. Am I going to be finishing the series as season two is dropping? I think so. Because if it's one episode a week, 12 episodes, that's the next three months. At the very least, I will have uh, volume seven read. That's terrifying. I also hear that, Azora. The censors must have been dead. Which tracks with season one as well. Oh, that's right. Volume eight is just about to come out. I keep forgetting what the actual volume release schedule is for Heaven Official's Blessing. Because all I know is that I figured out that, my, that these reading streams will happen by the time that the volume is out. So then I haven't... My brain has therefore said, well, then you don't need to know when the volumes actually drop. You just need to know that they'll be available. I actually haven't rewatched season one now that I've read so much of the book. I haven't rewatched season one. I really should. I'll probably, you know, Wednesday, I, um, I don't have anything like stream. I don't have a stream schedule on Wednesday. And I could actually just rewatch season one real quick as I figure out what's going on with the first episode of season two. That's true. I should. Yeah. I got, they're probably sold out by now, but, um, I have a little keychain on the way to me because some delightful person in the discord, uh, in the Patreon discord, um, was like, Oh my God, keychains of a Ming. Here they are. And there were only five left. So I grabbed one. So I have that coming. I don't know how on earth I could possibly like pin that to the back of the, or maybe he becomes the bookmark. I don't know. But Aming is on his way to me. And that is all that matters. Uh, this, like Modazushe, is absolutely going to be bonkers on a reread. Yes. It's going to be insane. I am going to rip all my hair out. It's true. <sighs> okay. All right. <sighs> Holy crap. So that was amazing. I loved that so much. I'm screaming at the top of my lungs. I am utterly beside myself. I need days to process. I'm terrified of the ending. And I think those are all the most important things that we need to know. So, unless I'm forgetting something, which is very possible, I am going to go ahead and go. I have a lovely, large um, gift package from somebody that I need to open up for uh for a video for 
Patreon. And plus something else uh, uh, as well. So I still have a couple other little things that I need to film before I'm done for the day. And it's about that time. So I'm going to go. I hope this was entertaining. I hope you enjoyed it. This volume. At least insofar as you can enjoy parts of this volume. We will pick up volume 7. Not next week. But the week after. And like I said at the top, keep an eye out either on the Patreon or on the community tab on YouTube for what specific days that the stream is going to happen. Because my schedule um, this autumn is crazy. So I won't know that until a little bit before we start, but I will let you know. So keep your eye out for that. And we'll start volume seven for whatever that's going to be. Uh, have a wonderful rest of your day, evening, night, whatever. Um, I scroll up as much as I can and read the comments for as much as YouTube will let me. It doesn't save them all now. It used to, but there are more of you here than there used to be. Which is another thing. I've passed 100 uh, uh, peak viewers at a time with these past couple of streams. And I could cry, but I'm not gonna, so I'm gonna go. So thank you so much for coming along. I'm so happy that you guys love this as much as I do. I will see you for volume seven. Please take care of yourselves. Keep an eye out for the 10K Q&A video that's going to be coming in the next couple of weeks. I love you very much. Have a wonderful day.